patients, they're really the ones who have a problem. I hear them telling you to shut up, that you're going to be embarrassed, and I even hear them flat out saying, I'm telling you what to do as a pastor. Give me a chance and I'll give you what does the Bible say. Always ask for what does the Bible say. Get it right here on Star News. New time, Thursday nights at 9 o'clock. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word, come examine the Church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 the Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord Thursday nights at 9 o'clock right here on WGSR. I couldn't stay in China at first. I thought he was a nut. And once I read the Bible for myself, I'm able to accept the truth now. All right. And it doesn't make me angry. I'm talking about the Lauren Hardy show on Wednesday. Don't worry about them, some y'all. Get off of it, would you? Don't dare do that again. Shut that up. Shut that up. Shut that up. As your pastor, I am telling you, please, don't waste your time on Wednesday nights watching this television program. If you're looking for Laurel and Hardy, I left my derby and I left my cane, but I did bring my Bible. If you'll read along with me, you'll find that the persons who are making the accusations, they're really the ones who have a problem. I hear them telling you to shut up, that you're going to be embarrassed, and I even hear them flat out saying, I'm telling you what to do as a pastor. Give me a chance and I'll give you what does the Bible say. Always ask for what does the Bible say. Get it right here on Star News. New time, Thursday nights at 9 o'clock. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to uh, Word from the Lord. Let me do a little adjustment here. How's that? Whoop. There we go. Ah, whoo! Thanks for staying tuned, uh, watching What Does the Bible Say? Got some good calls. If you would like to call in on our program tonight, the phone lines will be up just momentarily. Uh, always, our content information is for you to reach us if you'd like a Bible study or any of our literature that we have free of charge. Uh, it's all yours. Simply ask for us. We have our uh, DVDs of our tent meeting that we just concluded. Uh, back in uh, last month, last part of last month, and uh, they are rolling off the presses, uh, so to speak, and if you would like a copy of that, simply email me and tell me that you would like a copy and we'll get all the necessary uh, uh, information from you and we'll get one of those out to you, a set of those out to you. Uh, all the TV that, were done, that was done during the tent meeting is yours free of charge as well, and we hope that you will uh, uh, take advantage of that. We'll get those out to you. If you'll just let, uh, email us, call us, give us your name and address, maybe your phone number where we can reach you in case we uh, uh, need to. But we'll be glad to get that out to you. All of our information is always free, and and uh, that's because we uh, uh, know the gospel is free. We received it freely, and so freely we give it. And so we hope that you will certainly uh, uh, make yourself known to us and, and let us uh, get to know you. We'll be glad for you to, to come and visit with us, 823 Starling Avenue in Martinsville, if you're in that area and want to worship with the Lord's people, Sundays at 9, 10, and 11 at 823 Starling Avenue. If you're in Danville, 120 American Legion uh, is where the saints meet in Danville, of course, 250 the Boulevard in Eden. And if you're during the midweek studies, if you uh, want to study the Bible, uh, Danville, meets on Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock. Martinsville meets at Wednesday nights at 7 o'clock. And we meet on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock. So we hope that you will uh, uh, stop in and uh, study God's Word with us. Uh, also, uh, what does the Bible say? comes on at 8 to 9. Thir uh, Word from the Lord comes on at 9. And what you're watching now and then tonight after the news is Religious Review. comes Thursday nights after the news. For those of you who are watching, we hope that you're watching up in uh, Michigan as well. We had some technical difficulties with our internet, and I hope that that's, uh, that is being remedied. We are trying to uh, uh, make sure that we can get uh, uh, the folks up there who are watching, who are normally watching. Uh, we hope that you will certainly uh, uh, 
let us know if you are getting our, our broadcast tonight. We get some information. We get some uh, folks calling in from Michigan uh, during these two hours from 8 to 10 actually is when we are broadcasting in Michigan. That's the plan. So uh, I'll just say that right now so Scotty can hear that uh, when Mark's up on, on Thursday nights, go ahead and put the Michigan numbers up as well for his program so that people can take advantage of that. But uh, we want you to know, friends, that we're doing this all free of charge. We're, we're actually reaching out into Michigan. The church in Eden is actually taking care of, uh, uh, in, in part, I'll say half of the uh, the cost of the airtime in Michigan is being taken care of by uh, part by individual, half by an individual, and half by the church itself. So we want you to know that we are, though we're small in number, we're actually still reaching out into the Muskegon area. Um, I think Muskegon is the fifth largest city in Michigan, and so we are reaching uh, that uh, that viewing audience. And so we want you to know that that is how committed we are to getting the gospel out to you. Tonight, tonight, last week, if you recall, I, we did a lesson called three, three Words, Just Three Words, and, and I want to play this again. Uh, I want to continue this thought. Tonight, we're going to be talking about three more words, and uh, just three more words for you to consider. And one reason I want to do it is because there's so much valuable information that, uh, that people are missing out on by not knowing just three words or by, not, by the, the, not knowing the power of just three words, a three-word phrase. But also because I wanted to play this video clip again because it's just so funny and it just shows you how much uh, attention people pay to what they say and, uh, 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 and maybe how they say it. But listen to, uh, this is from the KKK rally in Stewart uh, this past summer. So, I have three more words. Three more words, white power. All right, well, you can do the math on that one. Three more words. Well, friends, just three words. Three more words. That's what we're talking about. We want to be concerned about three words. Now, three new words that we're going to be talking about tonight, and we'll probably spend the majority of our time talking about this tonight, is the new, the new three-word phrase for tonight is change the name. Change the name. How about that? Change the name. Friends, we hear all the time, there's nothing in a name. There's nothing in a name. And the reason why people say that is because they don't want to admit that their church is not in the Bible. So what they do is they dumb down the church or they, uh, 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 I guess you might say, yeah, they, they diminish it by saying that there is no importance to name. Now listen, this is a Baptist preacher who's on the phone in this call and listen to what he says when, when he's asked about the name of the Baptist church that he is preaching, uh, where, where he was the minister, pastor. Uh, there's nothing in a name? What's in a name? A lot's in a name. It is? Yeah. Such you as? You don't think a name matters? What's in a name? Are, are you saying a name is not important? No, you're telling me what's in a name. What's I'm telling a you, in, what's there's a lot, lot in a name. There's, there's ownership, possession. Now you tell me, is a name not important? Could be. Uh, answer my question. Is a name important, yes or no? Well, I, I, it could be. Why don't you want to answer that, yes or no? I answered your question. I answered you, gave you two things about a name. Now, is a name important? It, it could be and it couldn't be. Well, Bob, is a name important? To who and for what purpose? I'm Give saying is a name, any kind of name, is it important? Could be. Is that, is that, is that the best you do? Bob, is you're, is a name you're floundering around like a, a fish out of water. Is a name important, yes or no? If you're talking about dogs, no. Is a name important, yes or no? If you're talking about dogs, no. If you're talking about dogs, no. Why are you in the Baptist church, Bob? I'm not in the Baptist church. I'm yes, in you're in the Christ. Baptist church. You're in the Baptist church. No. Why are, you in, why are you in the Baptist church, Bob? I'm not in the Baptist church. 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 Now, now here, now here, this is Bob Ford, and he was saying that he's not, he's not in the Baptist church, and that names are not important if you're talking about dogs. Well, he must be equating the church, the Lord's church, with a dog because he says the name's not important on the church either. So the church must be a dog to him. Now, friends, is that really how we're looking at the, at the, at the Lord's church, the church that he purchased with his own blood? Is that really how important we're talking about? 
But we keep hearing this idea that there's nothing in a name. Now, I'm going to see if I can pull up another uh, uh, caller where, where people seem to think that the name is not important. And what I want you to do is I want you to listen carefully about, about how they're saying it. Because I believe that the name really is important. Otherwise, they would not be, uh, they would not be saying it in this, in this fashion. All right? Listen carefully. Uh, let's see here. Uh, my Bible, my church is in the Bible. Uh, my Bible, my church is in the Bible. Would you provide that scripture for us so we can read it to the television audience? Yeah. Chapter 20 and verse 28. You read that. What, what chapter that is? Chapter 20. What book, what book is it? Acts, Acts chapter 20 uh -huh. and verse 28. Okay. Your church is in the Bible? Yes. All right. Could I read that for you? Yes. All right. In Acts 20 and verse 28, that passage says, Take heed unto yourselves and to all of the flock over which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to feed the church of God. Now, are you listening, television audience? Listening carefully. To feed the church of God. Church of God. Well, the church of God and the church of Christ are one and the same thing. That's but, right. That's right. That's right, Church of God. The Church of God is the Church of Christ. That's right. Uh, this is Noah Vi from Stanley Town uh, Church of God. Isn't that right? No, I'm I'm a Baptist. Now you and called I'm on proud our, of it. you called on the other day and you said it was the Church of God. So I'm gonna start. Well, talking. I am in the Church of then God. Why don't you, the church then why don't you Christ call the Church of God? Why don't you call the Church of God? I am. Why don't in the you church. Why don't you tell? Now, now, so folks, let me just stop right here. There's more to it. But you see how, how important it is? Name's not important, right? A name's not important. But when I start telling this gentleman that I'm going to call, I'm going to say the church is the, is, the, is the Stanley Town Church of God. Oh, no, I'm Baptist. I'm Baptist. You know why? Because a name really is important to him. And it was important that he not be identified as a church of God. It was more important that he be identified as the Baptist church. But yet he still wants to say that he's in the church of God because he knows it's in the Bible. But the Baptist church is not in the Bible. But we want to hold on to the name that is not in the Bible because I guess that's why we're that, that's how we're identified. But notice he's not the only one. Let's continue. On the Lord Jesus Christ is in the church of God. Now why don't, now why don't you tell your pastor what's his name Edwin Moore? Is your pastor named Edwin? No. What's your pastor's name? That's not the old bit. Well, I'm, I, I'm. Now apparently a name is important because if it wasn't, he'd give me his pastor's name, wouldn't he? So I mean, if a name's not important, just go ahead and spit it out. Well. If, if his name was Edmund, why don't you go ahead and say? It's not really important, but his name's Edwin. It's just not really important on why you want it. Well, it must have been important. And I'll tell you what, it was important that he didn't give it. Otherwise, the preacher would be calling his name. See that? See how it works? Yeah, names are important. Let's go on. Here on what's the Bible say? This is a low one. Got it. Yes, sir. the volume up on this one. Uh, we met once uh, at your church. I'm Jimmy Whitlow. Yes, sir. And uh, I came to your church for a friend of mine's funeral once. I remember that. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> I thought a lot about what you've been explaining about denominational denominations, and I'm a member of a Southern Baptist church. Yes, sir. And I've decided to answer your question about why I'm in a Baptist church as this. Okay. I go to the Church of Christ over at Fontaine Baptist. That's all I want to say. Thank okay. you. All right. Well, now, now apparently a name's important because he wants to make sure that he's in the Church of Christ. If it wasn't important, why even identify it as the Church of Christ? If it's not important, just go ahead and say, you know, I'm going to the Fontaine Baptist Church, and, you know, it's not really important if it's got the name of Christ in it or not. But, friends, the name is important. It is important. And we're going to show you that in another detail. Here's another Baptist preacher, Randy Linderman. I think he's still in town. He's still in town. It, it, <clears throat> but if I see a group of people who say, well, we're, we're Baptists. Well, 
who do you belong to? You know, you're not telling anybody who you belong to. Now, you, I know you would say, well, I belong to Christ, but right. your name doesn't indicate I that. I guess I'd be more of an advocate of saying I am a Christian, and I gather at Druid Hills Baptist Church. Are you in, why are you in the Baptist Church, Bob? I'm not in the Baptist Church. I'm yes, in you're in the Christ. Baptist Church. You're in the Baptist Church. No. All right. Now, they don't, want to, they don't want to admit that they're in the Baptist Church, but yet at the same time, they hold on to the name. Baptist Church. You hold on to that moniker. Why? It must be because it's important. I'm going to have to see if I can uh, do a little finagling here. Here we go. All right. So it must be important. All right. Now, is the name really important? Well, now we're told that it's not, but friends, if it's not, think about this. If a name's not important, why did God put so many names in the Bible? Did you think about that? I mean, for example, Acts 4 verse 12, neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby must be saved. Well, if a name's not important, you just, you just try to be saved by, by Peter or by Paul or by John. If a name's not important, let's just go ahead. You'd be saved by Judas. How about that? Name's not important. Go ahead and identify yourself as a follower of Judas. See, names are important. As a matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians Chapter 10, the names were so important to the, uh, to the Christians there that they erroneously started following, uh, they erroneously started following uh, men. Look at this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we'll start in verse 10. Paul says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Well, that name's not really important, Paul. But I want to beseech you by that name that ye all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. Verse 11. For it has been declared unto me, uh, uh, unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of, well, that name's not important, really who said it, that there are contentions among you. Now this I say, that every one of you saith, I am of, well, that name's not important, and I, well, that name's not important either, and I'm of, well, that name's not important, and I'm of, well, that name's not important either. Well, if it's not important, why is he going through all the trouble to identify all the people that they are naming themselves after? Or they said that they have uh, um, been taught by, I'm of Paul, I'm of Paulus, I'm of Cephas, I'm of Christ. Why is it that, that uh, uh, Paul's going through all this trouble if a name's not important? Why would, Christ, why would Paul have to say, well, is Christ divided? Well, it doesn't appear that Christ's divided because names aren't important. So if names are important, why is Paul dealing with this? Because names are important. Was Paul crucified for you? Is it important who was crucified for you? Is it important that the person who was crucified is the Christ? Or if not, then we'll just crucify Paul. Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Apparently, it is important about a name. You see, names are important. And I'm, I'm making a point here, friends, that we know that names are important because names mean things. They carry, they carry ideas. They carry the, uh, uh, the identity of a person or they show possession or ownership. They, they identify the certain qualities of an individual. If names are not important, then why don't you, then why don't you just uh, uh, drop your name? You go to the bank and just try to cash a check that's not signed. A name is important, friends. It's important. And I know it's important to all of you who say names aren't important because notice this. This is what happened last month in the, uh, the Southern Baptist Convention. Now, this is from the Baptist Press, and this has been all in the news last month. Here's the headline. SBC president, that's Southern Baptist Convention, or Southern Baptist uh, uh, Church, or, yeah, convention, Southern Baptist Convention, but it's for the Southern Baptist Church, uh, says a uh, president announces task force to study possible convention name change. Now, let's think about this. If a name's not important, why go to all the trouble to change the name? If a name's not important, why is it that you're, not, that you're so concerned about changing the name? You know why, friends? It's because they know that names do mean things. Names carry ideas. Names carry ideas. You know why the Chevy Nova, I think it was the Chevy Nova, didn't do very well in, in uh, uh, 
uh, Mexico, because it means no go. It means it won't go. Now, who's going to buy a car that's named no go? If a name doesn't mean anything, then you just put that out there. You just put a brand name out there that doesn't sound appetizing. You just put a brand name out there that identifies your product as something that no one wants. See that? Names mean things. And it even means things in the, in the religious world because all the denominations want to make sure that they have the right brand name to get more people. And that's exactly why the Baptist church is considering a name change. Look at this. Here's the article that went along with, with, uh, with that headline. I'm going to uh, apologize. I'm going to read some of this. I got as big as I could. But Nashville, Tennessee, this is uh, uh, the Baptist Press. Southern Baptist Convention, top paragraph, Southern Baptist Convention President Bryant Wright has announced the appointment of a presidential task force to study the prospect of changing, I get it, the 166-year-old convention's name. Why bother to change it? It's been around for 166 years. Sure, it's good enough now as it was back then, right? Well, there, I'll tell you something, friends. If it's only been named for 166 years, that's pretty new. That's really not old enough to go back to the Bible. Why don't you get your name out of the Bible? See? But what we're going to do, you need to stay tuned tonight, because what we're going to do, everybody says we're all bad and we're mean and everything, but I'm going to show you that we're, we're going to be very helpful tonight. We're going to do something very productive, if you will. But first, let's ask the question, why change it? See, if nothing's in a name. Now, let's go on with the, with the article. It says, second paragraph, motions to study a name change have been presented to the convention on numerous occasions. For example, 1965, 1974, 1983, 1989, 1990, 1998. More recently, the convention was asked in its 1999 annual session in Atlanta to conduct a straw poll to consider a name change. The straw poll was defeated on a floor vote. A motion at the 2004 annual meeting in Indianapolis to authorize the SBC president to appoint a committee to study a name change was defeated on a ballot, 44.6% uh, yes to 54 Five percent no. Now I wonder where he got the authority to to even put a committee together if uh, they voted they didn't want to do it. But anyway, they don't seem to follow their own rules. That's why I know they're not going to follow God's. I mean, they don't follow God, so that makes sense. They wouldn't follow their own. But nonetheless, friends, they're trying to study about name changes. Now, why is it? Why is it they would want to change a 166-year-old name unless there is something in a name? Unless there is something to how they are identified, the moniker that they wear, the name tag that they wear, if there's something to that, then you'd want to change it. But if there's nothing to a name, then just leave it alone. And apparently people think there is something in a name. All you people who say there's nothing in a name, apparently there's something to a name because the Southern Baptist Convention... Uh, what, six or seven times they've tried to consider a name change and people said, no, we don't want to. We want our name. We want the name the way it is. Well, friends, let me tell you, there's something in a name and that's why people fight it. Now, here's another paragraph and then we're going to get down to our help session and we're going to open the phone lines up here for this uh, uh, particular help. Go ahead and put the phone lines up so people can start calling in. And this is what we're going to do, all right? Wright said, now this is the president, Wright said he believes Southern Baptists would benefit from another look at the question. Now here's why. They want to change the name because Southern indicates a particular region and they have gone out of the South, number one. Number two, Southern, they said, conjures up a certain image of of racism and uh, 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 predominantly why and, and all these characteristics. So they're saying, we want to change the name to get away from that. Wait a minute, there's nothing in the name. There's nothing in the name. Why don't you leave the name the way it is? See what I'm talking about, friends? They know there is something in the name. Now, here's what the president said, and this is where we're going to help out. The president said, 
I'm going to ask this task force to consider four questions. Now, if you're calling in, if you're calling in, I want you to consider these four questions. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take the Southern Baptist president, we're going to take his questions, and we're going to get some input. Because they actually have a website where, we, where they want feedback on the name change. They want feedback on the name change. Let me see if I can pull that up here. I think I have it right here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to uh, help them out here. Here's, the, here's the, uh, uh, their website. And they're actually wanting feedback. They're actually wanting feedback on the name change. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to help them out. And uh, people call in and give me their input on this name change. And I'm going to... Uh, uh, send a letter to the Southern Baptist Convention and we're going to try to give them some ideas. Number one, he asked a question. He said, is it a good idea? That is, is, it, is there value in considering a name change? Well, now, is it a good idea? Is it a good idea? Let's, all right, uh, well, our phone line's gone now. So is it a good idea to consider a name change? Well, friends, here on, on, uh, on A Word from the Lord and what does the Bible say in the Religious Review, we're concerned about being right concerning the Bible. So, yes, there's value in considering a name change if you're going to get back to the Bible. It is always valuable to consider a name change if you're going to go to the Bible. All right, you want a word from the Lord? Yes, sir. Uh, I was commenting about the, uh, the uh, name change for the Baptist. All right, you th well, let's take this first question here. Is it a good idea? That it, is there any value in considering a name change? What, what would be the value of considering a name change? Well, I mean, you think about it. I mean, that kind of that kind of puts that takes down the wall of of division that that they might have. All right, another word. Baptist. That's a good idea. That's a good point. Now here we are. We understand that names divide people, right? Names divide people. Now, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 14 that Christ, uh, he is our peace. He has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us. So Christ broke down walls that would actually bring people together. Look at verse 15. It says, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commands contain ordinances for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. So peace actually comes if we break down walls. So it's what you're saying is if, if they were to change their name, they would actually be breaking down some walls that would bring unity. Is that what you're saying? Right. Right. I mean, you, you take a look at, at, at how many people... That, that they could bring into their congregations by taking and breaking down, uh, you know, saying Southern Baptist, because I think like you pointed out, you know, that would offend a lot of people saying, oh, Southern Baptists are just racist. Right, right. So, so it would be good to, have to, uh, to, to, to remove a name or change the name if it would bring about unity, bring, bring people in. And I think that's really why people have divided, is it not, denomination, the very names, some call Baptist, some Methodist, some Pentecostal, some Presbyterian. They've all divided in names really to keep them apart. So if, if you didn't have any names, if you didn't have any names, then what you'd add, you'd actually have unity, would you, would you not? Yeah, I mean, I, I know of a couple of congregations in town that was actually part of one congregation, and they actually changed their names slightly by adding, you know, certain little things, certain little differences to their names, but they all came from the same congregation originally. All right. What, what is that? Well, just, well, I'm, I'm just going to, well, I, I'm not going to mention some of the names, but I know there's one over there on uh, Aiken Road. That name I can't remember, but I know that, that church, um, some of their members split off, and they're actually right down below... Uh, the church building that you're at up on the boulevard. The the uh, Christ, Christ Way Baptist. Um, I think it was they they I think they had split off from the uh, I think it was an Aiken Road Baptist or something. Okay. So so what you're saying is if they if they would just drop their names and they would they'd actually have some unity there because they could they could all be called themselves the same thing again. 
which you know what what's yeah. really what that tells me too is that uh, if if you really want unity, if you really want unity, if you'll get rid of the names that that are well, let's say unscriptural, like Christway Baptist. I mean, that Christway is not in the Baptist Church. Christway is not in the Baptist Church. So that right there tells me that you know they're they're definitely in need of a name change. All right. Well, listen. I got another call. Let me let me take that call. That's, I appreciate your input on this. We're trying we're trying to help the our, our Baptist neighbors out. Everybody says we're bad guys, so we're trying to help them out tonight. So I appreciate your call. All right, thanks, sir. All right, you on the word of the Lord? Hey, brother James, how you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, uh, I have what, an idea. What do you think about? Is it a good idea to change the name? Let me ask you this first. A good idea to for the Baptist. Uh, the Southern Baptist Convention, Southern Baptist Church, to consider changing their name. Uh, I would say it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant? Okay. For them, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, the, the name only matters if the activities behind the name match up with the name. Okay, okay. I mean, I, I can call myself uh, Barack Obama. Okay. But it's pretty meaningless. I mean... Right. I think it'd be easily discovered that I'm not who I'm claiming to be. Right. You're not. You're not the Barack Obama. You may be. You could. Ch you could change your name to Barack Obama. I could. Yeah. That's right. I could. But you wouldn't be the person that most people identify as Barack Obama. Well, right. And and so why would I change my name to something right. that doesn't identify? Right. Well. But okay. Well, I said that, that's that's a good that's a good point. Did you have something else you want to add to that? Well, yeah, I was going to say for those who you know don't think that the name matters of wherever they're assembling, then if they offer, give an offering in check form, then just have them put Church of Christ on that check and see what the people collecting those checks think. I mean, if they think it doesn't matter, then just go ahead and put Church of Christ on there, like the gentleman who said he was in the Church of Christ, but then later said it was Baptist. Right. Okay. Well, if it doesn't matter, and he's calling it both, just put the Church of Christ name on the check okay. when you hand it in. All right. All right. That's a good point. Now, there, there's actually four questions that the that the Southern Baptist uh, president asked, and so we're kind of bleeding off into some of them. So I don't want to delve off too far into that because I want to actually get to the all four questions. But that, that's a good that's a good point. So, uh, so you're saying really it doesn't really matter if they change the idea or not because. What matters is what's behind the name. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's a start to okay. by the correct name, but then, okay. you, you know, you have to meet the requirements of the name. Right. You have to line up with the name, the identification. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate your call. All right. Take one more call on this. We're going to move to the next question. All right, you're on the word of the Lord. Is it a good idea? Page. Is it a good idea that, that, that the Southern Baptist Convention is considering changing its name? Is that a good idea? Well, if you're, if you're asking me, I'm saying they've got it right. The Baptists have got it right. The Catholics have got it right. The Lutherans have got it right. And the Methodists have all got their names right. They're okay. not the Church of Christ. Okay. And therefore, they're depicting themselves as what they want to be. They want to be Baptists. They don't want to be Christians. They want to okay. be Catholics. They don't want to be Christians. Okay. They want to be Lutherans. They don't want to be members of the Church of Christ. So okay. therefore, their name is depicting the distinction that they want to have. So, and I say so, they finally got something right. So you're saying it's not a good idea for them to change their name? Well, uh, yeah. Let them, let them keep what they got because okay. that's okay. exactly what they that's are. What, well, I, see, I'm, try, I'm they trying got to... got something right in their lives. I, I hope they hang on to those names. They okay. Got, well, see, I'm trying to help them out. Sure. Everybody says everybody says that we're mean and we're picking on the Baptists all the time. So I'm trying to help them out. You know, I'm trying to get some feedback that maybe they normally wouldn't get, uh, and, and just see, you know, is it a good idea? So we have one person that says, yes, it's a good idea. The next caller said it, it, it's irrelevant, and and you're saying that it's a bad idea because they're actually they're yeah. actually going to lose their identity. <laughs> Okay. Hey, yeah, I, I like the Baptist name. Okay. I hope they keep it because that depicts who they are. They're not okay. Christians. Let them keep that Baptist okay. name. That's one thing they got right. <laughs> okay. Let them keep that. That, that indicates they're not uh, in the Church of Christ or part of the Church right. of Christ. They're their own okay. thing. They're their, okay. But I say it's a bad idea. Let them let them keep what they got. Okay. All right. So so I'm saying well so we're 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 thirty three percent say keep it. Thirty three percent say doesn't matter. Thirty three percent said 
said, uh, uh, go ahead and change it. So, all right, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Well, I'm going to ask the next question. We're going to move to another question, and, and let's see if we get some feedback on that one, okay? So, th- all right. Hey, and we're, we're calling from Michigan, by the way. Good show. Okay. All right. Thank all right. You. We're, we're up and running in Michigan. All right. Thanks for your call. All right. Now, so is it a good idea? Well, I would say this. If, if they're actually trying to get back to the Bible, make sure they're doing things in, in, uh, in Bible ways, then yes, it's a good idea to change their name. Because after all, there is something in a name. But if, if, like the last caller said, if they're like just you know not really wanting to change, then go ahead and, and make sure that you're identifying yourself as what you really are. Don't be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Now, here's the third question. Here's the third question. I don't know that we can really answer this. This may not be our area of expertise. It may be above our pay grade. But here's the third question that the Southern Baptist uh, president asked. What would the potential legal ramifications of a name change be? Well, you know, I don't know about that. I, I don't know. It depends on what they change it to, I guess. You know, you can get in trouble if you actually... Uh, take a name that is trademarked and you put it on uh, something else. See? Ford can't go out here and put Chevrolet, I don't know why they'd want to, but on their, on their vehicles. You know why? Because that is not their brand. That's not their brand. And you can't take the title of a book or you can't take the, uh, uh, the title of a, of a movie and portray it as yours if it is copyrighted, if it has some, some identity to something else, you know? If, if you wanted to make, a, let's say if you wanted to make a, 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 a write a book, if you want to write a book and, uh, you know, you want to say it's the, the autobiography of, of I, I don't know, uh, uh, the autobiography of uh, uh, Barack Obama or it's the autobiography of somebody uh, here in town, the mayor, whatever, you, you might have some trouble because that person might not want you representing them. So they don't want their name slandered. Now, there might be some legal ramifications about that. i tell you what, if there's nothing in a name, how about they all change their name to Westboro Baptist Church? There you go. That would be a good name. Plenty of name recognition. Plenty of... Uh, uh, of, of publish to go along with that. Everybody would know who you are. What would be the, the potential legal ramifications? Well, see, friends, they're concerned about the law. They're concerned about what man's law said. But how about this? You know, if you're really talking about God's law, you ought to be concerned about whether it's uh, lawful, not so much whether it's legal. That's really ought to what, what you really ought to be uh, discussing. And here's why I say that. If you'll notice in, uh, in, uh, in the account where, let me see if I can find it here. I think it's Mark 4. Uh, Herod. I'm drawing a blank here. Legal, not lawful. See here in Matthew 14. I know, and it's not Matthew. Where's John the Baptist say legal but not lawful? Can you hear me over again? Mark 6 18. Okay, thank you. I knew it was in Mark. Mark 6 18. Here's what, here's what John said to Herod. John told Herod that it is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife. Now, watch the distinction. It may be legal for you to have something, but is it lawful? See that? Is it lawful? John the baptizer was looking at Herod's marriage, and he said it's not lawful. In the eyes of God, it was not lawful. Legally, yeah, you can have, you can have as many wives as you want to. Legally, you can have your brother Philip's wife, but lawfully, in the eyes of God, you can't do it. Now, you might can change your name to whatever you want to as far as the church is concerned, and that may be legal. The question is, is it lawful? Is it right in the sight of God? That's really what you ought to be concerned with, okay? Now, so, now let's move to question four. Let's move to question four here. What would the potential financial implications be? Now, friends, I'm going to say this is really where they're most concerned. 
If you really want to know what the Baptist Convention is concerned about, changing their name, they're concerned about the money. Now, one of the callers a little bit ago said, you know what? If you really are concerned about name changes, go ahead and write your checks out and, uh, and, and put it to the Church of Christ and see if names are important. See if a name change is important. I can assure you that they, won't, they will not want anyone sending money, spending, uh, giving them money if they can't cash the checks. So they want to make sure the checks are written out to whatever they determine the name is. Now, friends, if people don't want the name, they're not going to support it financially if they don't want to wear it. If, they, if you take off the name Baptist or you take off the name Southern and somebody wants it on there, you know what? Some people are going to leave. You're going to have some financial troubles. I can assure you that. Now, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be your friend here. If you, want, if you want the money to keep coming in and you want the big crowds and everything, you better leave the name the way it is so that you won't lose a lot of members. Okay? Now, that's just, that's just me talking, just trying to be friendly to you. Now, if you're really concerned about what God says, if you're really concerned about what God says, you don't worry about the money. You change your name to what God says, and then the rest will follow. Matthew 6, 33, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So, so what would the financial implications be? Well, you'd lose some money. You're going to lose some money, I believe. It, it, uh, uh, but now, you might gain a whole lot more if you, dumb, if you dumb your name down and call it some generic brand. You know, some people like generic brands and some people like name brands. So you leave Baptist on there, you're going to get money from people who want to buy the name brand. But if you take off Baptist or you take off Southern, you'll get some, you'll get some uh, help from individuals who don't really care about the name. All right, so really can't help you on that. But this is really the question that I really like. This is really where I want some help. This is really what they're wanting help from. They're wanting people, and let me go ahead and see if I can pull this up here. They're wanting people to give some suggestions. Now, this is the website, Pray for uh, SBC, and this is, what, this is what it says. This is right here in the corner. This is the, the right-hand corner of the screen. This is what... Their website says, it says, suggest a new name for the SBC. Now, friends, this is where I want your help. You call in and you give me some, some, some ideas, some name ideas for the Southern Baptist uh, Convention, and, and we'll pass them on. We'll pass them on. The Southern Baptist Convention President, Brian Wright, is seeking your input on a new name for the SBC. The suggestion will be compiled and given to the committee our group assigned to explore a name change. Okay, so if you call in with some suggest, suggest, suggestions, then, then we're going to pass them on, okay? That's what we're, that's what we're going to do. Now, so what, what name would you suggest? All right, that's not me. Well, uh, it really kind of depends. Like I said, if you're if you wanting to spice it up a little bit, uh, save some money, one that, one that comes to my mind right off the top of my head is this. Now, the reason I think about this is because, how about the Satan Baptist Church? Satan Baptist Church. Now, here's why I say that. You're going to save a lot of money because, see, you still got the initials. SBC, Satan Baptist Church. You don't have to change letterhead. Maybe just a few, few words on some letterhead, but you can still keep the SBC logo, see? Still stands for the same, Satan Baptist Church. You still got the Baptist in there, so you're, you're not really uh, generic, You've just, you've taken away that southern, you know, that racial, that uh, uh, predominantly white, uh, regional type thing. And now, you know, Satan is, is worldwide. He's nationwide. So, I say the Satan Baptist Church. That's, that's my suggestion. That's one I'm going to put in the pot and, and send in. But what are some suggestions that you might, you might think of? Well, here, is, here are some things that, seriously, that I would consider... Telling the Baptist Church, Southern Baptist Church, that they ought to name. How about simply the church? Would you do that? How about simply just call it the church? Now, here's why I say that. In Acts chapter 2, verse 47, look what the Bible says. The Bible says that the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now, what church was it? 
What church did the Lord add the saved to? Well, it wasn't the Baptist church. It wasn't the Southern Baptist church. It wasn't even the Primitive Baptist church or the New Primitive Baptist church. It wasn't, you know, the first or the second Baptist church. It was simply the church. So if you really wanted to get back to the Bible, how about just call the, how about just call, uh, the church the church? See, which church was it? Notice this. In Acts 14, 27, uh, Acts 14 and verse 27, look at this. <clears throat> and when they were come together and had gathered the church together, which church was it? Which church what, uh, came together? Now, you go to Danville, the city of churches, uh, you go to, to Martinsville, you go to Eden, you go to Reedsville, and someone said, well, let's gather all the church together. Well, which one? Everybody automatically says, which one? But in the Bible, the Bible only knew one church. It only knew one church, one kind of church. How about, how about if you really want to identify yourself and lawfully be in good standing with God, how about at least get the name right? How about you just call it the church? Just call it the church. See how that works, all right? But if you want something a little more specific, what about the church of Christ? What about the church of Christ? Now, I know we get this all the time, but notice this. In Matthew chapter 16, in verse 18, Jesus said, Upon this rock I will build my church. Now, who's going to build the church? And how many is he going to build? Jesus is going to build one kind of church. All right? One kind of church. It belongs to him. Therefore, it is the church of Christ. Friends, when we say the church of Christ, we're not talking about a brand name church that is different from all the denominations. We're saying we're, it's the original. The church that we're in is the one that you read about in the Bible. It's the kind of church that Jesus died for. It's the kind of church he, that he uh, established, that he built. And it's the only kind of church, really, that's pleasing to God. So if you're looking for some way to identify the church you're in, how about just call the church of Christ? Romans 16, verse 16. Now, this is where everybody gets stirred up. Everybody gets stirred up. Well, because it says, well, you don't see the church, the church of Christ. It says churches of Christ. It says church is of Christ. Well, let's think about this, friends. If there is only one kind of church, but yet there is a church in Jerusalem, and there was a church in Antioch, and there was a church in Thessalonica, and a church in Philippi, and a church in Ephesus, but yet they were all one kind of church, can't you still say church is of Christ and it still be one church? See how easy that is? Church is a Christ. Now, you don't make this problem with the, with the church of God. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. The church of God. Sorry about that. Acts 20, verse 28. I want to show you something. In Acts 20, in verse 28, here's what Paul said. Paul says, The elders of the church at Ephesus, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which hath purchased with his own blood. Now, here, the church of God is singular. See, it just says church of God. Well, what about this? In 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 16, now, Paul says, if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. Now, how many churches of God are there? There's just one kind. But there are many congregations that make up churches. So you have to have, you have, to have more than one congregation in order to have churches, but they're still in one kind, church of God. The churches of God make up the church of God. Just like the churches of Christ make up the church of Christ. And just because the Bible doesn't say church of Christ in the text does not mean that there is not one kind of church that belongs to Christ. It's the church that Christ died for. It's the church of God. 
So any of these names, any of these things that the Bible calls the church, you can call. Now, if the Baptist church, if the Southern Baptist church is looking for a name, new name, why don't you use one of these names? I'm, I suggest you just call it the Church of Christ. Identify as the church. Tell, tell everybody we're going to change the name from Southern Baptist Church to the Church of Christ. See how that goes. Or, or better yet, just say, it's not the church of Christ. Say, it's not the church of God. Which one is it? See, all these are good names. These are biblical names. These are textual names. If you're really concerned about doing something right, if it is beneficial, if it's a good idea to change your name, if you're talking about getting back to the Bible, I, I say it's a good idea. Use one of these names. But if you're not, if you're not, you need to keep it the same. It just really depends on what your, what your uh, uh, mind is, wh where you want to go with that. You want to work with the Lord? Here's a question for you. Okay. Y'all are so much against the Baptist church. Explain why the Bible talks about John the Baptist being the one that uh, baptized Jesus Christ himself. So you think because John the Baptist baptized Jesus that, he, that we should call the church the Baptist church? Well, I mean, he was a Baptist. He was called a Baptist in the Bible for some reason. He, because that's what his job was. He was called John the Baptist because he baptized. Okay, I'm going to have to hang up so I can hear your answer on okay. TV. All right. All right. All right. All right. He was called John the Baptist, sir, because he baptized. That was his job. That was his job. Now, just because that was his profession doesn't mean... We're going to call the church the Baptist Church. Now look at this. In John, so I find this. John chapter 3 and uh, verse 23. Now here's John baptizing. Now look at this. John's disciples said there arose a question uh, between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came to John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness. Now, that's Jesus. The same baptizeth, and all men come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This is my joy, therefore, uh, fulfilled. <clears throat> uh, fulfilled, okay? Now, notice this, verse 30. John said, he must increase, but I must decrease. Now, the man that you're saying we should call the church after, John the Baptist, he said he should decrease so that Jesus could increase. Now, I'm not about to be in a church that's named after a man, number one, that was simply the friend of Jesus, that was the forerunner of Jesus, that was diminishing uh, because of Jesus. I don't want to be in that church. I want to be in the church that he was telling everybody to get into. He's saying, follow in Christ. You're saying, call yourself out of John the Baptist. When John the Baptist himself said, I must uh, decrease so that he can increase. Now, uh, if, if John the Baptist was a member of the Baptist church, I would like to find that in the Bible. I would like someone to show me that in the Bible. That's really what we're looking for. So the reason why we're against the Baptist, sir, is because they are the largest Protestant denomination around, more people are going to be lost, they're going to go to hell because they are in the Baptist church which is not in the Bible. Now, if it's, if it's wrong for us to try to convince people that the church they're in is not in the Bible, then, then I'm just going to be wrong. But I know there's only one kind of church in the Bible and if the Southern Baptist Convention is really wanting to change, if they're really wanting to get a new name, change the name, I say change it. Change it to one of these. Identify yourself as the church of God. Identify yourself as the church of Christ. 
Identify yourself as the body of Christ. Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. That's the church. The church is the body. Identify yourself as the church of the firstborn, the bride of Christ. All of these are identifying characteristics of the one kind of church you read about in the Bible. So if you want to change your name, change your name. Listen, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. Uh, didn't realize what time it was. Let me get my information back up here. I want you to stay tuned for uh, Religious Review coming up after uh, the news. Uh, we'll Mark Children get a little FaceTime in. Then Religious Review coming on. Johnny Robertson is in the studio. Uh, so he's going to be live tonight. Always remember to ask, what does the Bible say? You'll get a word from the Lord, and then you can do your own religious review. Thanks for watching, and have a good night. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting Babel? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word,